This is the second uh, video showing off my Akai X7000 Vintage 12-bit 128K, I think, uh, sampler uh, from about 1986, I think. Um, those of you who watched the other video, I kept on calling it the X700. It's actually called the X7000, but, you know, bottle of wine later, I just, uh, just forgot. Okay, so... As we all know, these zip drive, uh, zip drive, quick disk drives, um, over the years just die. The bands go in them, and there's the quick disks there. So I've been looking at alternatives to get samples back and forth. The unit, um, there was an old DOS program that can do it. Um, there's the Atari program. I think it was called Steinberg's Avalon that could do it. I can't do it on this one because unfortunately that's only got 512 k of RAM. So my next alternative was the good old trusty Amiga. So this is the Amiga 1200 just with 2 mega RAM um, and my old MIDI master MIDI interface for the A500. So that's a few years old too. Um, and running a program called Sample Wrench. This is available for PC. Um, DOS, ST and Amiga, oh I don't think, sorry it's not available for the Atari I don't think, but it's only the Amiga that can actually do the special sample uh, dump for the Akai X or S7000 and a couple of others because it doesn't actually use the uh, standard MIDI protocol. So what do we have then? So I've got my workbench running there with sample wrench running. That's, bear with me, I'm doing this on an iPad, so I'm all one-handed. That's so all I do is go to load, and we select uh, a sample. These are all 8-bit um, IFF samples, but they could be 12, anything you want. So we press there, so there's my sample, a bit old school. File, send, where would I like to send it to? So bank number one, channel one, and we'll adjust the sample as it goes in. So I'm sending. And on there, we should have, if the focus works, receiving sample, it says. There we go. So, fingers crossed. There we are. So, simple as that. So, they take a little bit longer than uh, to load in than you would with the quick disks, but... It's a very reliable way of organizing all your sounds, loading things, saving them. Um, a nice way of organizing everything. So let's see if you've got that classic piano. Where is it? If we can see it somewhere. It's a terrible video I'm making, so excuse that one. Well, let's see what this sounds like. Well, then we go to file, send, and again we'll overwrite it because the memory is quite limited. So this is taking some time to load. That's 1.45 seconds. Eight bits. So it's in there. Great. It's, it's an inferno. Useless sound. Um, so these are all public domain Amiga um, sounds actually. So let's see if we can find our classic piano stab sounds so you could do this on any Amiga um, best to have one, one meg at least so let's load that sampling and obviously you can edit them before they go in or edit it in the unit and you can obviously sample on the Amiga if you've got some techno sound turbo cartridge or things like that. Or you can sample on the Akai itself. So this is loading and watch that. That's 3.2 uh, seconds long. Um, I'm not sure how much in K. Um, but there we are. We're back in there and we should have... Got a famous sample. So uh, that's a nice and 
easy way to send and receive samples from your old vintage sampler where the driver's gone and there's no way to get it repaired or you know even if you do get it repaired give it a few years it'll be gone again um, so it's a really nice reliable way of working with samples organizing them from the Amiga um, or if you do have an Atari ST that can run Avalon um, and away you go simple as that so unfortunately you can't do it on the on the PC or modern day computer because I think a driver goes in between the software and hardware which is sort of especially written for the Akai's or um, at the Korgs as well some of them so there you go any questions on how to set it up drop me an email enjoy <laughs>